Hello and welcome to this video on the design of Mark of the Ninja. Um, again, I've had a cold lately, so if I start coughing, I apologize in advance. Um, but let's get to it. If you haven't played the game, it's basically a 2D platformer slash stealth game with a focus on the stealth and not so much the platforming. Um, so this is a screenshot from the normal mode of the game. There's also a new game plus where the vision is cut down. As you can see here, um, I'm hiding up here in the sort of air ducts or whatever. Um, there is a way where if you jump down from this level uh, down to here, you can actually hang out of the uh, of the duct and then look around. Because most of the guards are walking around like this and they have their weapon and they have a flashlight attached to a weapon and you're only visible if you're in the light so as you can see here this is a light and this is light and drawing white on white is a bad idea but whatever so this light is shining something like this this light is shining over here uh, maybe not that much because I think you can actually jump to this uh, sort of platform here and then jump down without being seen uh, but yeah about uh, the core part of the game is that if you're in shadow you won't be visible far away like this enemy here if you're standing yeah obviously behind the door you can't be seen but let's imagine that the door isn't here um, which means that if you're standing outside the light the enemy wouldn't see you but if you were standing and there was another light over here uh, making you visible he would see you from like way over here instead um, you will only be seen if you're actually standing right in front of the guard. Um, let's imagine that this is all dark. You would only be seen uh, from a few feet away. So the main part of the game is actually about manipulating light and sort of controlling the lights. Um, because as you can see here, I've climbed down. Uh, in the last screenshot I was on top here. So I've climbed down, I'm hanging out of the vent, and I have broken this light. Which means that the guard will hear it, because the hearing uh, distance, you can't see it in this screenshot. But if you try to throw a knife at a light, you will see the sort of uh, distance where people will hear it. I'm not really sure, but I'll imagine it's something like this. It's a really shitty line, but whatever. So the guard hears it when it's breaking and as you can see here this uh, yellow sort of highlight means that he's trying to investigate this. And when a guard is investigating something he will shine his light. Uh, so instead of just pointing it at the ground as he's doing here he will shine it upwards towards the area. He will probably shine it a bit over here and looking like this. Which means that if you cause noise uh, the guards will be behaving differently and they will try, will try to look for whoever made the sound basically. So uh, you break lights which means that you have an easier time of moving around but it will also alert the guards to your positioning. Um, yeah, here is another screenshot where the guard is uh, pointing his light up towards the roof. So I've been, uh, instead of hiding at the bottom here, which would mean he would see me, I've moved back into the air vent. And as you can see here, the guard also has a sort of countdown thingy around his question mark here, which counts down from being a full circle uh, until it's just one single bar left. And then when it goes away, he goes back to his normal patrol. Um, so every time you make a noise, the guards will come looking for you for a while and then just return. Um, and when you try to kill someone, you, you basically move up to them, you press X if you're in stealth. This means that you get this sort of mini game where you press the directional button and then X again. And if you succeed with a mini game, you kill the guard making no noise. And if you fail the mini game, you kill the guard, but he will scream. Um, so again, uh, I think it covers like the entire screen when they scream. So if you make noise, 
uh, killing a guard, other people will tend to come running. This is probably one of the first guards in the game, so he doesn't have many friends. Um, but if I bring up this one instead, uh, as you can see here, I've uh, strung up a guard, uh, killed him, and I put a chain up here so he's attached to this light post or whatever it is. And when this guy moved over here to find him, um, he became terrified, which is this sort of weird exclamation mark. And when guards get terrified, they start shooting. Um, so when he started shooting, even though these guys up here didn't see this guy, because they've been moving around here and the light doesn't extend down here, um, so when these guys heard the shooting start, they um, they also start investigating and shining the lights. Um, I think the reason why the yellow area is here is because this guy was standing there when he started shooting. Um, I'm actually hiding here. But the thing is, um, if this yellow area uh, overlaps you, um, this basically means that if a guard, if one of these guys were to move down here and move over and try to investigate this, he would actually find you and pull you out of cover. Um, because if you're hiding somewhere where someone is looking for you, they will find you. Um, so in this case, the um, it basically spreads. Like if you make one guard find you or terrified or something, it will spread it to other people nearby. Which means that the uh, this game is really about stealth, and you can hide bodies and stuff like that. I obviously made this to uh, make a point, but I'm just showing off that. Um, Events will kind of spread. Um, another part of the game is that if you jump and hold the left trigger, I played with a control pad on my computer, um, so if you hold the left trigger, you can uh, throw these knives at lights. Uh, and while you're doing this, you're actually freezing time, which means that you have as long as you need to uh, kill the lights and you can do stuff like kill two lights and then hook if there was a hook thingy up here you could destroy two lights and then hook to it while it's paused uh, which means that you would destroy the lights and then you would end up here so um, this basically takes away the skill part or the stress of uh, throwing things as well as climb around um, so that uh, the platforming and the aiming isn't really supposed to be a difficult part of the game. The difficult part is uh, analyzing the situation, breaking them down, and then execution, executing the uh, executions, I suppose, uh, in order to sort of move on to the next area. You can also choose to not kill anyone and just uh, sort of try to sneak past them which I would say is probably the hardest way to play the game. Um, killing uh, killing everyone and then hiding their corpses will give you probably the highest score and it will still be, be it will be a challenge but it's a pretty nice challenge. So if you want to do it the no kills, no alarms route, I would say save that one for last. Um, here is another thing. Um, you will have different abilities, like if I show you this one, it's darts, which break lights. I'm not sure if I actually took any other screenshots. Probably not. But yeah, one of the other ones is Farsight, which basically makes this sort of green glowy thing. And it allows you to see, uh, see enemies through walls. And this is basically for planning. So you hide somewhere and you use your foresight skill. It doesn't cost anything and you can use it as many times as you want. So this is what you use to plan out when you can't do stuff like uh, look through doors. Because if you're hiding, if this was a door instead and the room was open through here, uh, you could sneak up next to the wall and basically, I don't know if you look through the lock or whatever, but you can see what's in the next area if you're standing next to the wall. The same thing with 
uh, with events that I showed up here. Here at, at this point I'm actually not showing but you can see the vent is a little bit open. Um, this basically means you're looking through it. So you can do that uh, through doors and you can do it through the bottom vents which would probably give you a vision something like that. And then if you want you can have your far sight. So let's say you were sitting down here using your far sight. Um, and if there was a guard standing over here and you were looking out the, the grate, you wouldn't actually see this guy. But if you use the far sight, uh, you will. So it's basically just another tool to make sure that you're able to plan ahead um, a sort of map hack or something, I suppose. Um, so the next part here is alarms, which means that if you're found the guards will get the red exclamation mark instead of the orange one. That just means that you're looking. And they will start firing at you. Now on normal mode, as you can see here, I have two health left. I think you start out with five, four or five. I'm not sure actually. And you can take a couple of shots on the normal mode. In New Game Plus, anything that does damage to you will kill you. Um, but on normal, if you raise the alarm, enemies will start firing at you. They will um, basically call out. Like this guy up here didn't see me at first. But when the other guy started shooting, he obviously came running to help. And you can see the sort of red laser sight. It just means that they are shooting at you. So the normal beam, it just means you show up. And the red beam means they are firing. So on normal mode you can actually get away uh, even if you trigger the alarm um, by kind of hiding and running uh, but you will also get minus points for raising the alarm and at the end you actually get more bonus points for having no alarms for the entire level. So if you're going for points um, you don't really want to raise any alarm for the entire level. Um, yeah. As I said before, you can drag bodies. It's really hard to get a good screenshot of this, but I'm actually dragging a guy here. Um, so it's a guy. And what you tend to do is throw them down the chutes or hide them in vents like this one up here or this one over here. Um, you get bonus points for hiding bodies and it also means that you won't trigger more enemies because when enemies find a body they will also trigger the alarm after a while. They basically pick up a sort of walkie-talkie and call their friends or something. Um, yeah, As far as the sort of tutorials in the game go um, you don't get the weird sort of freeze frame do this um, uh, button combination sort of tutorials. It's more like this, um, which just show up on your screen. You can still move around, you can do whatever you want, you can even run away to the left here. The game won't stop you, which makes it amazing in my opinion. Um, you also get sort of dialogue explaining how to do something and why, but it's obviously kind of hard to show that in a screenshot. Um, so I just included this one. Jump and then hold left trigger. Which means that the timer will freeze and you will be able to aim at this electrical box here and throw a dagger at it. Um, breaking it and removing the electricity from this place. Um, the game also has a great map. Um, it's actually kind of too great because it also shows stuff like secrets and stuff like that. Um, let's say if it's there are secret maps in the game, I will come to that later. Uh, so let's say it's a secret area, it will look something like this. Um, so you'll always be able to see the secret areas on the map, which I kind of like it actually. Um, it puts more of the focus on the challenge of doing something instead of just having the exploring being the difficult part. Because as you can see here, the all of this gray here 
this means that there will never be anything here. So th they will never hide secrets and stuff like that. It will always be obvious from your map. And it also shows your position. It shows any and all uh, objectives. And you can actually uh, move over the entire level, I think. So you can see every everywhere you've been and everything you, you're going to go. Um, you obviously explore the map as you go. You don't see everything from the level start. But everywhere you've been, you see if you miss something, like this hidden area here. Um, it also shows... Um, these are markers for the currency that is used to buy upgrades. The seals. Um, so at the moment here, I have 1950 points to get uh, one, you basically just finish the map because it requires zero points. Next one is 95 and then 2100, no, 21,000. Um, and you also have these sort of sub quests. Destroy lights, reach it in under a minute. Um, and what happens with these is that you will unlock different suits. Um, some of them are, I think this one is terror. This is sort of sneakiness. Oh, this is maybe sneakiness. Yeah, I don't know. But they have a few different varieties, which I'll get to here. Um, so this one is my favorite, Path of the Hunter. Um, this one unlocks with kills, I think. And what this does is uh, all active stealth kills will automatically succeed, which means that you will never have to do the minigame, uh, which is basically why I like it. Um, so all the suits have a good aspect and a bad aspect and this one is items will not be replenished. Um, I think this one is the sneaky one which means that you don't make any noise while running but uh, you can't use the sword. So it's for uh, doing sort of sneaky versions of the missions. Uh, this one makes enemies uh, terrorized when you kill people in front of them. Um, I don't remember these ones. I think one is two uh, uh, two items, two aggressive items or two defensive items. No, yeah, right. This is blink actually, but you can't have any aggressive item. I think this one has two aggressive items, and this one is the default one. So the styles that you will unlock while playing actually make you play the game fairly differently. And I think it's a pretty cool idea. Um, the only gripe is that not having to do the minigame just feels so much better that I pretty much always play with a Hunter one. Um, so yeah, here you can see uh, while playing with the Hunter you get two attack items. Um, mines, and then you have terror darts, caltrops, and uh, this one isn't unlocked, but I think it's and they eat corpses or something like that. Um, then you also have defensive items, like if you're playing with the normal one, you get defensive items which make noise or make uh, a gas cloud you can hide in or uh, a box that you can carry around and hide in, like in Metal Gear. Um, there's another one, I don't remember. But they're all... Oh yeah, I have this one. So it's the noisemaker, it's the cloud, it's the box, and... Yeah, I don't remember what that one is. I don't really use the distraction items as much, just because I tend to go with the hunter. Um, and there you have your attack items as well. You also unlock techniques, which are basically fighting moves, like killing people out of a door or from hiding below the floor. Uh, this one is grappling, um, and this one is flying, uh, basically more flight control. And then you have a bunch of kicks and stuff, which is used for killing people uh, when you don't catch them th uh, from stealth, basically. And this is just health. Um, so as you progress through the game, you will unlock more and more techniques, 
which allows you to kill people in more interesting ways, I suppose. Um, and all of this is unlocked with the uh, seal currency that you get from doing missions and getting high points and doing the side quests. You also get them from um, well, secret missions, I think. I'm not sure, actually. Um, but yeah, every time you finish um, a map, you will get to this sort of score points. Uh, at the top here, you will get scrolls, which are worth one seal each, and you find these in the map, basically. Just go to them and pick them up, and you get a bit of backstory, or... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to call it. Things that ex sort of explain the setting and a bit of backstory. And then you have these seals here, which are the mini missions, and then you have the three ones for score. So when you go through a game, the first score here is what you get for killing thing or killing people and picking up things. Uh, then you get undetected bonus. Uh, for anyone who didn't see you or you didn't distract them by making noise at all. Um, then you get a bonus for distraction. You get the extra I talked about before for no alarms raised and then no enemies killed. Um, this is basically just a bonus to make sure that people who play it the stealthy way actually get some kind of score as well. Um, because it's really hard to get a high score uh, killing no enemies because a normal kill is something like 400 points and then if you hide the body you get another 250 if you just sneak past them you won't get any of that um, you can also get an undetected bonus uh, like this one no yeah it's that one um, which basically means you were really close to them, but they didn't see you. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to get points, but I think they all tie in well to the gameplay, except for the hidden body bonus. Um, I mean, hiding the bodies mean you will have a less problem with being found. So it actually adds enough to the game uh, without having to give you points, because if you want to go for the high score, you will actually have to go through and uh, hide everyone and it sort of becomes a grind uh, and it's one of my sort of peeves with the game. Um, there are also these sort of challenge rooms which don't have any enemies but they're more of puzzles like in this one you have a box here and you pull the box you open the door here the box falls down then you push the box over here and you get the scroll, which is at the top here. Um, so there are more about uh, sort of physics puzzles and laser beams and climbing around. Um, so the light and the enemies aren't really a part of it, but it's pretty cool still. Um, I kind of like them. They're more uh, puzzly and not quite the same game, but it still ties into the um, yeah, here are sort of level specific things. In this case, it's the sandstorm. Um, the game has kind of different chapters. So, uh, one of the chapters have these, uh, I'm not sure what are called, Arabic looking buildings with domes or something. And in this case, the visibility for everyone is extremely cut down, both for you and the enemies as well. Um, but it's just when you're outdoors. Um, so this is a pretty cool idea where making something like weather impact the gameplay is actually a pretty cool idea. And I wish more games did stuff like this. Um, this is another example. In this case there's a thunderstorm and every time you hear the thunder go off you need to hide because when the light flashes, and I know they're in the wrong order, but when the light flashes you will be visible even if you're standing out here in the shadow. Um, it's not super obvious. Uh, you can see it when you look in the top left, like if his white thing up here is showing, it means he's visible. 
but I'm actually not standing in the light because the only light is over here. So every time you hear the thunder you have to hide because otherwise enemies will spot you. Um, there's also a map which has trains and when the trains go by they make so much noise that uh, enemies won't hear you running uh, unlike normally. So they have a lot of really cool things where um, sort of environmental things impact the gameplay which I think is really cool. Um, in this case it's uh, also a light puzzle like up here you have a light on this crate so when you move the crate over here um, this thing will become visible and this stops arrows from killing you when you're trying to get to the top here and this is another uh, part of the game which I think is really cool uh, because the entire game is basically about light and shadow and how to interact with them um, so in most cases it's about the guards but they're actually building the puzzles to tie into the core mechanic of the light and darkness um, so I think they used it really well uh, but this only picks up uh, in the late I don't know, late quarter of the game something like that um, so maybe they didn't think of it to begin with but I think it's really cool um, so they do a lot of uh, interesting stuff with the levels and this is obviously uh, just another screenshot but if you play the game um, basically if you're in here and there were, there's a thunderstorm or something and then you move outside the sound actually changes and the game is super polished in that way um, it's just really cool small details that uh, really show you that they put a lot of attention into it. Uh, just easy stuff like having the platforming bit be uh, 2D uh, just to make sure that you can do precision stuff and then having the background sort of 3D to create depth. Things like that which mean the game plays perfectly but uh, it really has a lot of interesting sort of contours like this spikes here, the rings which are used for climbing and just making sure that the world is detailed but the gameplay areas are still really obvious and you will never really have problems making out uh, making out the playable area from the background or anything like that um, so I'd really recommend this game I think it's really cool and really polished but I also have a few different um, things I want to complain about now these are all really minor things and I actually had to go had to go back in to make sure that I had a few things to complain about but this is one of the first ones this minigame here um, I think it's pretty unnecessary um, it might only be because you get the suit that um, lets you skip it basically and maybe they wanted to make sure that not everyone um, just used the same sort of stuff I don't know but I think the game could really have gone without this because it only adds um, a sort of weird layer where you don't get any benefit from finishing it it's only punishing for uh, people who fail at it and yeah I don't know I think they could have removed this entirely um, there's also another one with the controls which I would say is pretty hard to get around um, like you can't see it here obviously but if you look up here it says jump um, I will just draw a sort of analog like uh, the controls basically cut off at the 45 degree angles which means that if you're holding somewhere here on the uh, control stick which means you would probably go down or want to go now uh, it still says jump and then when you go to the next one uh, mount wall which is basically if you have the control stick again and then you're over here instead of the, the last one which was just above it um, you will get to the mount wall one instead um, which basically means that you climb down and then grab onto the wall instead um, this sort of uh, overlap of controls I suppose 
means that you will have a few scenarios or a few times when you're playing the game where you will die just because you didn't move the extra two degrees on your controller like it's obviously hard to uh, to make sure that you're actually pressing it in the right direction because you can't use the directional keys on the gamepad um, because they're used for the, um, the skills or whatever you want to call it, special items. So you will eventually die just because you do wear stuff with this. And it's the same with the B button because if you're dragging a corpse, uh, which you can't see here but I'm actually doing, you can't open doors because doors also use the B button. So you have to basically put them down, open the door, pick them up again and move through. Um, so it's a couple of sort of minor issues with the controls. But if you play it, just because the rest of the game is so awesome, minor things like this will feel like the big problems with the game. Um, there's also a couple of issues with the checkpointing. Um, especially in the later part of the game because at the beginning there obviously aren't that many enemies but you can't see it here but I actually respawn right here and this um, stalker spawns here so every time I spawn at this checkpoint I have a stalker looking right at me the alarm goes off and she basically kills you there is um, it's possible to get away from stalkers, but I wouldn't recommend it because once they start chasing you, it's basically over. Um, it's a minor challenge, but yeah, this basically only happens if you uh, don't kill enemies, but instead make them chase you and you move. Let's say out here is the next area. Next area. So when you get to this point, you're supposed to spawn here because you're supposed to have killed all the enemies in the last one. So if you don't kill anything, you just run past them. You will um, basically get to new checkpoints, which means that you will spawn in these weird areas and you will basically have to restart the map. So the checkpoints could have used some work just making sure that when you spawn, you don't have anyone looking straight at you. Um, the game also has a minor problem towards the end where the complexity of the rooms um, or the sort of layouts become so great that you don't have a real... Uh, you can't get an overview the first time you go there because you can't use the... Uh, you can't use the farsight um, to uh, look at everyone in the room. Um, you can't see it here, but uh, there's steps here from my guy. There's another guy up here. There is one guy up here, and there's one guy down here. Um, you spawn at the bottom left here. I just moved up to take a screenshot. Uh, then you also have your sniper dude. And basically, as the game becomes bigger in scope, it becomes harder to control because... You, if you start killing off one guy or two guys, the patrols that you couldn't see from the starting area move into the part where you've killed people, basically. So, as the rooms get bigger, hiding people gets much harder, and predicting what you're supposed to do the first time you go through a room uh, becomes too complicated, basically. Um, this could probably be solved by letting the player move around the, the far side camera a bit more. But uh, watching, uh, basically, if you have complicated movement paths, um, the player can't really learn them the first time anyway. So I'm not really sure how to get around this without just cutting rooms up into smaller segments. Um, but yeah. When moving on to New Game Plus, um, I will actually move back and show you an image from the normal normal one. Um, let's see here. We 
we hide this one and we go not to that one but to uh, yeah this example um, as you can see here I'm actually seeing this guard even though he's behind cover and I'm not even looking out the vent and I'm also all I'm also seeing like the entire duct up here when you move to the new game plus version you can't see anything behind you um, as you can see here I'm watching to the left so I have sort of a vision cone something like this and I'm not seeing anything over here except for the step sounds from this guard which is basically just a sort of semicircle so when you move on to the new game plus version you will get the same game again but you will get it harder because number one you don't see guards that you can't see and you um, you will also not see sort of what they're examining as you can see here I threw something up here and this guard started looking for uh, started looking for me or for whatever made the noise and you can't see the orange circle that was uh, available on the normal version you also can't see things like how big your noise radius is when uh, breaking lights and when uh, when running and things like that so this means that the new game plus is for when you know how much noise you're making basically you can uh, play it again and you can uh, get the harder version basically I think the game really picks up the pace on new game plus um, it's really cool and when you get the new suits as well um, this new game plus I would say it's the best part of the game and then when you start playing it uh, without killing anyone on New Game Plus um, the game really shines as a stealth game um, this is just late game um, showing you that these stalkers which I had in the last shot um, on normal mode you have these sort of circles that show you if you uh, move within this circle they will see you even if they're looking the other way on uh, new, game new game plus version you won't get these circles at all and these stalkers are really tricky um, they obviously can't see you if you're hiding even within the circle uh, but yeah I think they're pretty cool enemies most of the enemies in the game are basically one shot kills if you kill them from stealth um, the stalkers aren't really possible to kill from stealth um, because as soon as you move into their area they find you basically um, but yeah that's all I had to say about Mark of the Ninja uh, it's a pretty awesome game I would recommend pick it in up in if you're into stealthy games um, there are a lot of games these days which have stealth aspects to them but this is one that actually pulls them off so this has been Mark of the Ninja thank you for watching